person. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's regardless. nice. Yeah. We're going to need a lot. <laughs> so many initiations. It's like, phew. Flowers and flowers and more flowers. Do the initiates get flowers? I don't know. That's what Babaji said on the forum. I think it was, there's a plan. There is a plan. There is a plan. Question from Luciano. Yes. I was left thinking from yesterday's darshan that Radha is the true controller who lets Krishna think he is king. I got a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the question? She's confused, but there's no question. Yeah, he, he wants to confirm if that is true or not. Does Radha let Krishna think he is king? I'm not sure. Do, oh, sorry, does Radha think? Is Radha the true controller who lets Krishna think he is the king? I am a little confused. Oh, I see. Okay. He was talking in a very high elevated spiritual platform. I mean, in the spiritual world, if, uh, like, like some people try to read Srimad Bhagavatam, the tenth canto, without even reading Bhagavad Gita. If you read like that, it's like very, very easy to misunderstand 100%. Because to understand Radha Krishna's pastimes requires a, a very, a very detailed and deep and uh, scientific approach to understanding spiritual life. Prabhupada uh, was very merciful because he wrote Krishna book, which, which are many of Krishna's pastimes. And this, this is very nice. Com what, when you get deeper into Srimad Bhagavatam, which is like an encyclopedia, and the 10th canto of this encyclopedia, the 10th, uh, let's say the 10th book, is narrations of Krishna's pastimes, similar to Krishna book, but deeper. So these pastimes and also Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are very, very esoteric, very, very uh, intimate and unique. And it's very hard to understand them if we are in, like still in material consciousness or mixed. So, when Babaji speaks like that, for him it's very easy because he's like in the spiritual platform, it's normal for him. So please don't be bewildered by that. <laughs> Try to understand that he's in another level of consciousness. And it's, it's almost, or I wouldn't say impossible, but very, very hard for you to understand like Radha Krishna from where you're, when you're at, you know. At least that's my perception. I mean, I've been initiated and I've been practicing for a little time, three, three years more or less. And I, I do this all day, Krishna consciousness, do everything for Krishna. And still, uh, the pastimes of Radha Krishna are always esoteric. I mean, they're just so special. And uh, a little more specifically, Krishna is always... Uh, it's always they love each other. Krishna loves Radha fully and Radha loves Krishna fully. So sometimes for the sake of, of love, this, uh, this, this mood of playing with each other, <laughs> Radha gets tough, you know, and then Krishna uh, begs for, Radha, for Radha's mercy. And sometimes that's why Radha seems to be the controller. But in scriptural injunction, it's, it's very clear that Krishna is the supreme controller and Radha is her, his shakti or the hladini potency. It's, so, it's, it's really very intimate. <laughs> so if you really want to understand Radha's Krishna, Radha Krishna's pastimes, I would very deeply recommend you to go through the scriptures in a scrutinizing and 
read Bhagavad Gita and then Srimad Bhagavatam, going through each canto, then uh, proceed to read Nectar of Devotion, Chaitanya Charitamrita. All these books are very, very beautiful. And as you get deeper into them, the meaning gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. It's a long way, and there's no shortcut. <laughs> That's for sure. But the good thing is that it's so beautiful that it's you, every time you go deeper, it's more beautiful. And when you think, oh, that's it, that's very beautiful, then you can go even deeper, and then it's even more beautiful. <laughs> and when you think, oh, I, I know, or I'm getting closer to understand, then you, then you re realize that there's even a deeper layer and a deeper, and there's always something else to learn, to how to approach Krishna, how to serve in the spiritual world, how to improve service. So it's really eternal, it's never ending. So please don't despair, don't despair, Luciana. <laughs> There's just one more question from okay. uh, Keshab, who is not in the chat room anymore. Uh, oh. Should I ask the question anyway? If it's good, yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, are there any other rules other than the regulative principles that we have to follow strictly? Oh, well, I guess he got disconnected or something. There are several rules that are strict. Uh, for example, we were talking about that yesterday, the, the relationship between disciple and guru. This is always in the mood of awe and reverence. It's not like one can become a friend or like very familiar with the guru. Like, hey guru, how are you? Well, no, no. The, the, the way to approach guru is always with awe and reverence, always offering obeisances and very humble and obedient like a servant. This is, for example, one something that's very like that's it, that's how it works. And if Abayi, we ever like joke or something, he will immediately say, no, you should be in this mood, this is not proper. And we saw the same thing with Srila Prabhupada, that this was always the mood. The guru and disciple always hold this relationship of uh, uh, awe and reverence. This is, for example, one of the things that's, uh, that's like fixed a rule rule. And then, for example, offering obeisances, things like that are considered like obvious, you know. It's not like someone forces you to do, but you offer obeisances to the guru. Some people we've met that come here and like come as guests, they can't even offer obeisances. So that's like very, very bad, you know, very bad. And most of the things we do really is not because it is a rule. It's not because it's written in, in the book. It's because we, we like doing these things naturally. Like, very clear example, eating meat. None of us here would, would find it pleasurable. It's like after having nice, so much delicious prasadam, vegetarian, cooked, food offered to the Lord, and just, just to smell, when, I mean, we go to the store and just go through the, the killing animal part, and it's horrible, just to smell is horrible, because you get used to nice, pure, clean things, you know, so there's no question of, of uh, oh, I have to follow this rule, <laughs> it's like, if you don't smoke, is there a question that you will want to smoke? Well, no, because it's, you know it's horrible. Only someone who has this addiction, it's hard to, to remove, you know. But if you don't smoke, it's just not pleasurable at all. So, so try to understand that uh, these rules are just at the beginning seem like very hard or very, this is what you have to do. But actually, later on, as you make progress, then you notice that you don't want these things anyway. 
you don't want illicit sex, you don't want eating meat or being intoxicated all the time. I mean, these things go against understanding spiritual life, against purity, against cleanliness. When you experience purity, cleanliness, all these things, then why would you want to go lower? There's no question. Okay. There's another question from Luciano. Okay. Yesterday I was reading uh, about Varnashram Dharma and Srila Prabhupada says that the Vaishnavas are above Brahmanas. Although all that follow Krishna consciousness are Vaishnavas. It was not clear to me how Vaishnavas are above Brahmanas. Mm. 